Hey, how's it going? I would like to show you why you should consider not using nulls and instead return an empty. So when you use a null, of course, you have to add logic like an if. If the returned result is a null or whatever, then do some special little case. Otherwise, go and do what we wanted to do in the first place. But if you just forego the whole null thing, which in pretty much most languages from like 1995 and beyond is usually possible, then you can, it keeps your logic simple and straightforward. So to demonstrate that in JavaScript here, I'm going to make a function called create list. And it's just going to be kind of like return a range of numbers. A is the low number, B is up to but not including kind of like Python's range function or something. And so initialize an empty list called results. I'll just skip the semicolons and try and keep the syntax lean and simple. Uh, and then we'll have a for loop. And we'll, I'll even skip the var keyword too. So we'll have a variable, an index variable, initialized to zero as usual. And then We'll set a numeric variable and we'll initialize that to the A, the low value to start at of the range. And then we'll continue looping while that value is up to but not including B. And uh, then we'll increment. We'll go ahead and put some space right there. We'll increment the index and we'll increment the number. I could even put a stepping value in there, but we'll just go ahead and assume that the one, that the stepping value is just one. Okay, and then, so we'll take that results list and we'll feed it the index. And at that index, we're gonna store our number. And then when we're all done, we're going to re return our list. And as you can see, there's obviously no null value there. We just have our list. It takes the low and the high, and it comes in here, initializes, and in, did I say we have our list? We have our function that creates a list, takes the low and high parameter. Um, we initialize an empty list right here. We come through starting at the index zero, which of course is the first index, and the number. So if we feed this a, uh, a nine, that would be a nine here. And it would turn n into a 9, and 9 would be less than, let's say we call this 20 or something. And then it will go through, and it will go here, and it will go at index 0, store the value 9 the first time through, and then increment that index to 1, and increment that 9 to a 10, and so on and so forth, and go through, as you could probably imagine, and build up a little list. Then once that for loop's all done, then it will come down here and finally return that built up list of results. So what we can do is we can, a little bit verbose maybe, but do another for loop and say for each of uh, or create, maybe I'll even be even a tad more verbose than I was planning. So we'll say my list equals create list and we'll feed it, we'll just do that example, that nine comma up to, but not including 21. So that should be the values nine through 20. And then we'll say for each of my list, and then we will console log those, console log each. And so the expected result would be nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, right? So I'll run that. There we go, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Everything's just as expected, right? So what's the big deal about nulls? Well, what if we told it instead of 9 through what, you know, any values in here, we just said, hey, do, you know, do this. Okay, now what's this? 0 through 0. As we can see, no errors, press any key to continue. It didn't do anything. It didn't print anything. I didn't have to write any conditional case to get it to effectively just skip the logic. It's the same exact logic. It works in JavaScript. You can even just do that if you want and still works because those would be undefined and all this would happily uh, terminate.
because of those values. Okay. So then the other thing we can do just to kind of like maybe just further illustrate it from one other angle is let's say we're going to create a string instead. We'll call this create string. Of course, this idea applies to other languages as well. That's the way I'm trying to sort of do it here. So with the string, we'll leave all that the same and we'll say, um, we'll just kind of alter this to work better with string. So result equals uh, string, the static from care. So it will take that numeric code that we're generating right there effectively and it will turn it into its ASCII representation. And we'll go ahead and add 65 just to get us in the uppercase alphanumeric range, return results. That should be the same thing. Of course, JavaScript's dynamically typed, so we should be able to get get away with all that. And we'll do uh, zero up to, but not including 10. And let's see, this, this needs to be changed to string. And we'll change this just for good naming convention. We'll change this to my string. And of course my string right here. And let's run it and see if I messed up typing. I didn't. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, whatever, you know, it works. And then the, of course the same holds true right here. We could just, you know, have effectively an, an empty list and hit F5. And of course there's no errors. It just skips past our logic and everything like that. Because when it comes in here, it'd be like, you know, this would be a zero and a zero and it'd come in here and it would set um, n equal to zero, and if it would say if n is less than zero, which it's not, it's equal to zero, right? So right there, it would just terminate the loop before it even iterated one time. And then it would return that empty string and save it to my string, which would effectively be the empty string. And then it says for each character, effectively, right? We could even change that to chr or something if we wanted to be a little bit more readable uh, for each character potential character in there then go ahead and print the uh, what would it be 26 so for each character of my string console log that character so of course in this situation it's going to print the entire alphabet and once again if it's an empty list it will print nothing so Consider doing that to keep your logic simple instead of dealing with nulls and all that good stuff. Thanks for watching.